Happy lunch hour, guys. All right, so going into something that we I want to pay attention to for a couple of reasons. You guys remember back 2021, you know, the, the great toilet paper shortage, the supply chain issues that, you know, the Port of Long Beach, the Port of Los Angeles, <clears throat> everything that we were talking about left and right, you know, couldn't get stuff, stuff on the shelves was short, yada, yada, right? Remember all this, okay? And, you know, a lot of us think this is coming back, all right? We're going to see it again. The other thing you see is this huge push toward renewable energy. You know, the, oh my God, everything's got to be solar or wind powered. We have to get rid of fossil fuels, right? You see the stories coming out of California with, you know, Gavin Newsom saying that all trucks on the road, I forget what year it is, 2035 or 2033 or something like that have to be electric. They're not going to allow any diesel trucks on the road. Okay. Remember all this. So I decided to go put pencil to paper. You know me, I'm a numbers guy. And I wanted to figure out what it would take to move the goods in the United States that we need, okay, that we count on to move them by renewable energy. To say it was shocking, was it would be an understatement. All right. Now, we all hear the stories about, oh, elect electric cars, you know, they don't work in the cold. They, you know, where are you going to charge them? You know, oh, gee, you know, uh, I mean, pick something. All the reasons why electric cars don't work. You know, you can't recycle the batteries. The stuff comes from China, whatever it would be. And all those are good, valid points. But, of course, every John Kerry in the world has an answer for all of that. You know, far be it from the truth, but he's at least got an answer. This he can't come up with an answer for. And I'm going to give you this. Now, bear with me here for the next minute or so, because I'm just going to give you the progression of data that is out there. All right? But it's important for you to understand this. One gallon of diesel fuel generates the same amount of energy as 10 kilowatt hours of electricity. Okay? Give you that. A freight train can move one ton of goods for 435 miles on one gallon of diesel fuel. Okay? That's from NTSB and everything like this from many different sources. The average freight car, the average box car, can carry up to 100 tons of freight in it. The average train, the average freight train, is 73 cars long. So an average train can move 7,300 tons of freight. If you do all the math on this, so one gallon of diesel fuel can move an average freight train fully loaded 314 feet. Okay? Therefore, it would take 10 kilowatt hours to move a freight train 314 feet. Okay? One gallon of diesel, one 10 kilowatt hours, same amount of energy, okay? Now, assuming the solar panel capacity is 360 watts, you need about 10 solar panels to generate 10 kilowatt hours of energy per day, okay? There are 5,200 5, feet in a mile, so it would take 16 and a half days worth of solar panels for 10, or worth of solar input for those 10 panels to move a train with 1,000 pounds in it one mile, okay? So the obvious answer comes up, add more panels. Agreed, that's what you got to do, right? <clears throat> Trying to power your house, you need X amount of panels. The size of a rail car is 30 feet long and 7 feet wide, so 210 square feet. The size of a 360-watt solar panel is five and a half feet long and three and a half feet wide, so 19 and a quarter square feet. So you could fit 11 solar panels, roughly, okay, because it's not going to fit perfect, but 
by the math, 11 solar pan panels on the top of each box car. 73 cars means you have 803 solar panels on an average train. Okay, That means if every box car had solar panels on it, the train could generate 803 kilowatt hours of usable energy per day. Therefore, a train completely outfitted with solar panels could move goods 252,142 feet per day. That's 48 and a half miles. Okay. So a train could move roughly 50 miles a day. Now, I could do the same with cargo ships. I could do the same with airplanes. Please don't ever ask me to get on an airplane that's solar powered. Okay. You could do this all day long. All right. So you'll hear people, John Kerry ish again, say, we'll use semi trucks. Gavin Newsom wants all the trucks to be powered by electric. I want to give you this it takes 800 semi trucks to move the same amount of goods as, as one average freight train. Imagine paying 800 truck drivers to move 48 and a half miles a day. Okay. Truckers get paid by the mile. <laughs> what is it? You see the signs, 26 and a half cents or whatever it is per mile, whatever. Let's round it up. Let's say they get 30 cents a mile. Congratulations, Mr. Trucker. You drove 50 miles today. You get 30 cents a mile. <laughs> Do the math. <laughs> yeah, you made, what, 15 bucks? Okay, good luck. Okay. Now think about the goods you buy. All right. You can forget about fresh produce like bananas, avocados, oranges, grapefruits ever again. Unless, of course, you live in Florida, maybe, or southern Texas, something like that, out in the desert southwest. You know, good luck getting seafood if you live in the Midwest or the Great Plains. Mmm, six-month-old fish. Okay. You know, how about building materials? I'll give you these for some facts. 30% of the lumber used to build houses in the United States comes from Canada. 30% of the lumber used to build houses in the United States comes from Oregon. That means there's 40% left to build houses out of. Now, granted, there's woods all around me. I can get wood. <coughs> I lived in Vegas. Ain't building a house out of cactus. I sure hope you like Adobe if you live out there because that's your option. Okay. That new house that you just built, you want to wire it? How about copper? Okay. The copper mines in the United States are in, the biggest one is in Utah. There's other ones in uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Montana, and Michigan. That's it. Okay. You need wire to wire your house in Georgia? Okay. Well, that train's moving 50 miles a day. We'll have your wire to you in six months. Okay, Guess what the shipping costs are going to be. Okay. I keep going on with examples like this for days and days and days and days. Trust me. All right. Figure this. In 2020, transportation, the transportation industry, contributed 8% to the U.S. GDP, making it the fourth largest contributor to GDP behind housing, health care, and food. Okay, that's how important transportation industry is to the U.S. economy. Transportation's total estimated contribution to the U.S. GDP is $1.3 trillion per year. Yeah, quite a bit. Okay. It's what, 3% of our national debt? <laughs> Just think, okay. You want to completely crush the U.S. economy? Destroy transportation. Do what Gavin Newsom's doing. He's already destroyed California, okay? Because remember, the top three contributors to the GDP, you know, going back again, housing, health care, food, what do all those require? Transportation of the goods to do it, okay? Without transportation, everything turns, just grinds to a halt, okay? This is where you need to take this, you know, we all need to think past here because God knows Washington can't, California can't, anything like that. 
we need to be ready as preppers for all the goods we are using, all of them, not to be available, not just food, not just bullets, whatever it would be. You know, what happens when you can't get anything? There are no plastics. You can't get screws. I mean, you can go into aluminum, all right? We import, the United States imports more than two-thirds of the aluminum used in the United States. I don't care for what. Tin cans, car parts, you name it. It's all imported. On that cargo ship that's got solar panels on it that, you ever heard the slow boat to China? That'd be the slow boat from China. It'll be here in 2027. Okay. Cool, I need a light bulb. <laughs> I can wait four years. You know, that's literally what we're at, okay? You got to think about the preps you need. The things that you need. Go around the house. I mean, use this one. The clothing you're wearing, all right? Cotton. Cotton grows down south, right? I mean, I'm betting you can probably still find people who can spin cotton, right? Cotton doesn't grow so well in, say, Wyoming, Idaho. Guess you're going to walk around with fig leaves or something. Each of us, depending on where we live, has access to one resource or another. Take a look around where you live and see what resources are going to be available to you. And take a look at what resources aren't going to be available to you. Those are the ones that you need to focus on stocking up on once you've finished with the, the beans, bullets, and band-aids. Because as much as everybody says, oh, I've got everything I need, I'm done prepping. No, you're not.